tonight, we're tracking developing news. A known gang member and violent felon on the run after escaping prison guards in Boise. Also tonight, police in Ellensburg still searching for a 17 year old accused in a deadly shooting nearly a week ago. Tonight, the new details we have learned about where the shooting happened. Stacy. Breezy winds, cloudy skies, and showers on the way. Find out where those are going to happen tonight in my first alert weather forecast. This is Apple Valley News Now at 5 on your side. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Austin Reed. And I'm Alyssa Warner, a Prosser paraeducator arrested last week on drug charges, was supposed to be in court today for a hearing, but Amy Buxton didn't show up. Yeah, she was arrested back on March the 12th, charged with manufacturing or possessing a controlled substance with intent to deliver. Authorities say that Buxton was in possession of about a pound and a half of meth and more than 2,000 fentanyl pills. She bailed out of jail on $10,000 but did not show up for her hearing today. The state is going to request that bail be increased to $20,000. The judge approved the prosecutor's request. The court also says that she was notified of her court date. We are working to find out if she will be arrested again. Now, Washington has several new laws this year intended to help fight the fentanyl crisis with funding, overdose reversal medication, and awareness campaigns. Governor Inslee signed those proposals into law during a ceremony yesterday. And his office also says the governor is planning to sign the legislature's supplemental budget proposal, which would put even more money towards substance abuse disorder treatment programs. Let's talk about your forecast. Beautiful weather out there once again today. Another gorgeous day. Will this continue though, Stacey? <laughs> Well, if you're outside right now, you already feel a quite a difference. Remember yesterday we were at 80 degrees this time, 73 and cloudy skies coming in. Plus we have breezy and gusty winds. But let's talk about yesterday. The average first day of the year that we see 80 degrees in the Tri-Cities typically happens April 22nd. But yesterday, first time ever it happened on March 19th in uh, recorded history since 1895. Wow, Yakima, uh, May 1st is typically when we see 80 degrees, so very, very warm, but those warmer conditions are starting to ease off. And we're seeing some breezy winds through the region tonight. Those winds actually are gonna pick up overnight and strengthen as we move into tomorrow. So increasing clouds tonight, we're gonna see some scattered showers, mainly to the east, think the foothills of the blues, but we could see a stray shower through the Columbia Basin. Cooler temperatures into the weekend and get ready for weekend showers. Lots to discuss in my first alert full weather forecast. Alyssa, Austin. All right, Stacy, we'll see in just a bit. The Yakima Police Department has released new information in a police shooting that happened last week. The officer who shot a man on March the 14th has been identified as Officer Alam Martinez. Martinez is a three year veteran of the force. The shooting happened just after 7 a.m. near the intersection of Buwalda Lane and East Thornton Lane. Martinez is currently on administrative leave as the Special Investigations Unit goes through the policies and procedures. Ellensburg police are still searching for a 17 year old who's accused of shooting 21 year old Christian Guthrie outside of Jack in the Box last week. Guthrie died in the hospital. Police have not revealed the suspect's name because he is under 18, but they do say the shooting happened in the parking lot. When officers arrived, they found Guthrie in a vehicle shot with a 15 year old and a two year old in the vehicle as well. Neither was injured. The police say it appears that the suspect and Guthrie knew each other. They do not believe that this violence was random. Tonight, a local family is suing after a, a number of people and groups, including Franklin County. Yeah, this is a story that I've been working on for a number of days now. We're talking about 42-year-old Fabiello uh, Valenzuela of Canal. Well, she suffered from developmental disabilities and had the cognitive capacity of a 12-year-old. Back in March of 2022, she was arrested for a minor vandalism case. Her attorney, Eduardo Morphine, says jail and medical staff were negligent when it came to Fabiola's care as she died while in custody. So now we are um, we're trying to bring attention to this case because I think that you know if, if policies weren't followed, maybe if the public knows about it, maybe they can put pressure on, on our sheriff. He is an elected official. Hey, changes need to be made. Coming up new at six tonight, you will hear more from the lawyer and Faviola's son. Don't miss my special report again. That's coming up at six tonight. Alyssa. 
Well, we are tracking developing news. A prison inmate in Boise escaped overnight. He's currently on the run. Police say Skylar Mead was being transferred from a hospital back to the prison around 2.15 this morning when someone started shooting. Police say that shooting left two corrections officers injured. A third was shot by police in an apparent case of mistaken identity. And Boise police say Meade and the suspected shooter got away in a gray sedan. They're saying that's possibly a Honda Civic. You can see that vehicle and Meade there on your screen. The battle at the border is heating up tonight. Now, yesterday, the Supreme Court allowed a Texas law to take effect that would have allowed the state to arrest and deport people suspected of crossing the border illegally. But an appeals court stepped in just hours later to put the Texas law called SB4 on hold again. The big question is whether a state can step in and take over from the federal government, especially when it comes to our national border. This is the first time it seems to me that uh, a state has claimed that they have the right to remove illegal aliens. I mean, this is not something that just that a power that historically has been exercised by states. The appeals court held a hearing today, but it is not clear when they might make a decision. World News Tonight with David Muir will have continuing coverage coming up at 530 here on Apple Valley News Now. In Congress today, the Senate Intelligence Committee heard classified information about TikTok. The House already passed a bill that could lead to TikTok being banned in the U.S. because of its ties to China. The next step is a vote in the Senate, but it is unclear if or when that might actually happen. The Federal Reserve is once again waiting to cut interest rates, but still signaling that we could see changes later this year. So the Fed sets the interest rate that banks have to charge each other, but then those costs typically trickle down to all of us when it comes to everything from credit cards to mortgage rates. Today, the Federal Reserve Chair said inflation is still too high, so officials really want people to think twice before borrowing money. Inflation has eased substantially while the labor market has remained strong, and that is very good news. But inflation is still too high, Ongoing progress in bringing it down is not assured, and the path forward is uncertain. So officially, the Fed wants to keep inflation at 2%, and the latest numbers show that prices have gone up just over 3% compared to this time last year. The federal government is investigating and in investing rather almost $20 billion in computer chip plants made by Intel. The president made that announcement while visiting Intel's campus in Chandler, Arizona. Biden won Arizona by just a fraction of a percent in 2020. Right now, the U.S. doesn't make advanced computer chips, which became a big supply chain problem last year. The Biden administration is hoping that the U.S. will be able to produce 20 percent of the world's advanced computer chip supply within the next six years. Intel says the funding will help them build new chip plants in Arizona and Ohio, upgrade two plants in New Mexico and upgrade facilities in Hillsboro, Oregon. Take a look at this. The Prosser Police Department is warning people after a credit card skimming device was found at a gas pump at the Loves station yesterday. Authorities say the device was discovered on one of the fuel pumps. This kind of takes your credit card information and sends it to somebody who shouldn't have it. The police say there are several ways to protect yourself from getting scammed. You can try using contactless payment methods like Apple Pay or Google Pay. You can always pay inside for gas. That's less likely to have a skimmer. And always be cautious if you're using a non-bank ATM. And if you find a device like the one we just showed you, you always want to call police right away. All the beautiful weather we have been enjoying this week probably has a lot of people thinking about getting out on the bike trails all around the Tri-Cities. And you can be a part of improving accessibility. The Benton Franklin Council of Governments is asking for input on their regional bicycle plan. They held their first open house last night at the Pasco Library. Another one is going on right now at the Richland Library. In Richland specifically, officials tell Apple Valley News Now they are hoping to make biking easy and convenient because so many people are expected to move to the region in the near future. So that will be definitely something that will be shown within the plan. Um, up on George Washington Way and Jadwin, those are set to be to the Tri-City's first two protected bike lanes, so there will be a physical barrier between the bicyclists and the vehicles. 
It's all part of a big road work project, road work project expected to start within the next year. Tonight's open house at the Richland Public Library continues until 7. Tomorrow, you can check out the proposal at the Kennewick Public Library on South Union Street. That's from 5 until 7 p.m. We will have an in-depth look at what's up for discussion. That's coming up tomorrow on Good Morning Northwest. I love seeing that beautiful weather out on the parks, but it is all about to change, unfortunately. Stacy Lee is tracking a big drop in temperatures that's headed our way. That's coming up in your first alert forecast. And cooler temperatures or not, summer is on the way. Tonight we are highlighting a big investment that should make the Hapo Center more comfortable in the heat. You're watching Apple Valley News now live at 5 as we're on your side. The Honda you want is here, so drive in the moment with the versatile CRV or Accord. Both named a Car and Driver 10 Best. And when you drive a Honda, you're driving with the 2023 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com Best Value Brand. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. An evening with Third Eye Blind. Third Eye Blind. Live in concert. Playing a career spanning full band electric set. Legends Casino Hotel Toppenish. Friday, April 12th. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com and at the Legends Casino gift shop. For more, visit ThirdEyeBlind.com. When you get hurt on the job, you never know if you're going to get paid by Labor and Industries. Let Bothwell & Hamill fight on your behalf for your workers' comp. We can often increase your compensation. The sooner you call us, the better. If you were hurt at work, let us go to work to get you benefits. Call 509-584-4411 for a free consultation. Bothwell & Hamill. Your best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. It's the year's biggest selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. Plus, get zero down and 0% APR for 84 months or up to $2,800 off select Kubota tractors. Orange goes all day. Sales ending soon. Visit your local dealer today. Find a Kubota dealer near you at GoKubota.com. It's time to play Get to Know the Raptors and Alice. Favorite food. Pizza, duh. Ribeye steak, rare. A bowl of cantaloupe the size of a swimming pool. Favorite triple play attraction. Two words, arcade. The entire Raptor Reef indoor water park. Zip line. It's great for talking with guests. Triple play has fun attractions for everyone, including bowling, ropes course, and many more. All attached to a cozy hotel. Cantaloupe, really? Steak, really? After this woman died in lockup, should local jails do more to protect inmates tonight? Welcome back, everybody. Hey, an expansion to Hermiston's Harrison Park broke ground this afternoon, adding new playing fields and amenities. It is construction season. There's going to be three new basketball courts, new soccer goals, and a picnic pavilion coming into place. You'll also see lighting and security cameras being installed at the basketball courts. Now, at the groundbreaking today, we talked with some of the people who made these additions possible. Made to Thrive is a Hermiston-based organization dedicated to reshaping the lives of at-risk and foster youth. The organization provides mentoring, funding, equipment, and transportation for those youth, and the executive director says this project is one that has been going smoothly. And it just uh, came together pretty seamlessly. There haven't been a lot of challenges yet, but we are starting you know, just the groundbreaking. Harrison Park is at the south end of Northwest 13th Street in Hermiston. If you'd like to check it out for yourself, and that expansion is expected to be completed by June. In Pasco, the Hapo Center is going to be seeing some big upgrades after a $3 million grant from the Washington State Legislature. Franklin County officials say the arena side of the building hasn't ever had air conditioning, making it difficult to use when Tri-Cities summers bring scorching heat. Another key element is being able to use the Hapo Center as an emergency center for disasters. 
also as a heating center in the winter or cooling center in the summer. Franklin County Administrator Mike Gonzalez says he is focusing on making sure the money goes to places where it will make the biggest impact. The, the bones are still pretty good, but you look at some of the peripheral things like the parking lot, uh, the walls need to be painted, there's some ceiling tiles that need to be replaced, there's areas where the carpet needs to be replaced, there's walls that need to be spruced up, some of the AV systems need to be spruced up. So I think collectively I, we're going to look at the conglomerate of where we can be most impactful because believe it or not, nine million bucks these days doesn't go real far. So. We want to be as impactful as we can with those dollars and make sure we upgrade it, keeping in mind what's best for the community. Gonzalez also says the capital funding budget still has to be signed by the governor and the money will likely be coming in later this year. For now, the county is opening a request for proposal for the HVAC system. The projects will be funded not only by this $3 million grant, but also more than $6 million in rural economic development sales tax dollars. Well, today, the Tri-City Regional Chamber of Commerce held their annual awards luncheon. Well, this is celebrating businesses, both big and small, in our area. The Chamber of Commerce works to connect small and micro businesses even to resources, support, and opportunities. They emphasize the Chamber's advocacy for businesses in the Tri-Cities at today's luncheon. IT Haven, Meyer Architecture and Engineering, Prime Dental, and the nonprofit organization HeartLinks Hospice all received awards for being on a roll in 2023. From Apple Valley News Now, First Alert Weather with Stacy Lee. And our weather is certainly on a roll. Things have changed uh, just since yesterday. Much cooler, about uh, seven degrees cooler right now on our Dust Devil Sky Cam in Pasco. Traffic moving along nicely on I-182. Winds are a little bit breezy today. Our sunset at 710. Talking about those temperatures, yes, they are starting to cool. I'm going to move out of the way. We'll get back to our average temps by Saturday, Sunday. Actually, a few degrees below in the Tri-Cities area. In Yakima, those temperatures cooling down into the mid-50s right there on Sunday. So a little bit chilly, especially as those overnight lows drop as well. We got a little bit used to that 80-degree temp yesterday. Here's what's going on. The weather pattern, ridge of high pressure we had that kept us sunny and warm. It's out of here. That ridge of or this front has come through low pressure. Now that's one of three storms coming our way and that's going to produce some more snow in the mountains. I know a lot of people were thinking ski season is over. It does not appear to be that way. We are going to see some showers at the upper elevations. This first uh, trough is very, very brief. It goes through quickly and then the second one starts to move in on Friday. We'll see more active rain showers in the lower elevations and more snow showers in those upper elevations. That's just beginning. The snow is actually going to start falling as more substantially Sunday into Monday. So let's take a look at our future cast. Here's a few stray showers moving through the area tonight. Think mainly uh, east of Tri-Cities into Walla Walla. We'll have partly cloudy skies getting through our Thursday most of the day, a little unsettled, but then uh, Friday overnight, Thursday into Friday morning, we'll start to see these uh, rain showers come through the Yakima Valley. As the day moves on about midday, that's when we'll see the widespread showers through most of our region, Walla Walla, Tri-City, Sunnyside, Yakima into Ellensburg. And then we'll start to see uh, colder temperatures come and a couple of strong cells where we could even see some thunder and lightning. We do see some snow starting to fall on Friday. Again, that just ramps up as the weekend moves on. So just be aware of that. Allergy forecast, it is going to be windy tomorrow, so those pollen levels are high. We're mainly seeing juniper, poplar, and alder being the culprits right now, but every Everything just starting to bloom and blow around. Speaking of those winds, let's take a look. We've had breezy winds pretty much all day through the area, and they really pick up even as we get into midnight tonight along the foothills of the Blues and in the Columbia Basin. As we get to uh, early morning tomorrow, you'll see those gusty winds heaviest here in the Tri-Cities, Dayton, foothills of the Blues. It's going to be pretty blustery and pretty windy all day long, starting to decrease as we get into the afternoon hours. And then temperatures uh, or winds will start to recede as we get to our Friday. Tonight's temperatures are going to be in the 40s through the area. A few showers again to the east. 
Tomorrow's daytime highs looking pretty good, but there we are. I don't see 70 degrees on our map anywhere. 69 Tri-City, 65 in Yakima. Here's your seven day planning forecast. There's those showers we're looking at and those breezy to gusty winds mainly are going to be in the Tri-Cities, Walla Walla area as well as Hermiston. And there's your showers. Uh, we'll see more substantial rain come Saturday, Sunday, decreasing by Monday and temperatures uh, staying pretty consistent right about average where they should be for this time of year. Walla Walla, a little closer to the mountains. Yes, they have more chances of rain there and maybe a few snowflakes at those upper elevations. It's going to be a little bit uh, breezy to windy in Hermiston along that I-84 corridor. Still to come, I've got your uh, weather photo of the day, guys. All right, thank you very much. Up next on Apple Valley News Now, live at 5, we are talking about some big changes to protect the environment. Yeah, the EPA's new standards for vehicle emissions are being called the toughest ever, but there's a catch. We'll explain next. This newscast sponsored by Nissan. Time for a new roof? Let Eminem Roofing replace it with the product so good, you'll never have to replace it again. All roofs come with a limited lifetime warranty. Never replace your roof again. With the rain and wind comes roof damage. Don't wait till it's an emergency. Call today to receive 0% financing on approved credit. So if it's time for a new roof or siding, let Eminent Roof replace it with our certified installers. Because when it's all said and done, this is a sign you'll want your yard. Welcome to Pingree Ford in Sela, Washington where small town attention to customer service meets a vast selection of the best new and used Ford vehicles available. Whether you're interested in our cutting edge electric vehicles or our dependable lineup of trucks and SUVs, we've got it all just down the road. Come see us today and feel the power of Fingery. Hello, Shelby. Hello, Mariano. Upload Mrs. Robinson's case. Processing. Is there any new information? The record shows no driver at fault. However, we found footage which shows the other driver caused the wreck. Nice job. What's the insurance company's offer? You know it's too low. Should I ask them for more? Thanks, Shelby. But you know when they hear from the heavy hitter, they'll pay much more. The heavy hitter is one for you. Call 853 Injured in a car wreck? Call the heavy hitter. Attorney Mariano Morales. Wild Horse Resort and Casino is celebrating 29 years with a $150,000 anniversary Jeep giveaway. Beep, beep, win a Jeep for $20,000 cash. Play with your club wildcard to earn entries every day or download our mobile app. Play the game and win bonus Jeep entries. Play with your club wildcard to earn entries and win up to $1,600 every Friday and Saturday. Then drive off in a new Jeep Wrangler or take home $20,000 cash on Saturday, March 30. Wild Horse Resort and Casino. More winners, more often. Celebrate. 29 years. The Honda you want is here. So drive in the moment with the versatile CRV or Accord. Both named a car and driver 10 best. And when you drive a Honda, you're driving with the 2023 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com best value brand. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. Want free college or career training? It's possible. All right, tonight we are tracking the push to switch to cleaner cars and trucks with a big change from the Biden administration. Absolutely. The EPA just finalized new tailpipe rules. So they're being touted as the strongest yet but the final rules aren't actually as focused on electric vehicles as you might think. They will allow automakers to meet some of their standards with plug-in hybrids as well as those EVs. Officials say vehicle emission standards for cars built starting 2027 up until 2032 will reduce U.S. emissions by over 7 billion metric tons for over 30 years. Today marks a historic win for public health, for the environment, and for the future of our country. One mile at a time, we're cleaning our air, we're protecting public health, and we're creating good paying American jobs. Giving the automobile industry more flexibility to choose different combinations to achieve our environmental goals actually gives their customers more choice. 
So last year, Kelly Blue Book says less than 8% of the new cars sold in the United States were electric. The EPA is hoping to get that number to at least 35% by 2032. Now you can lower emissions by turning to batteries, but another possible way to clean up the environment is by focusing on the fuel itself. Yeah, new at 6 tonight, we will take you to Richland, where Coleman Oil is partnering with a renewable diesel company to go green. But first, we'll have a final look at your forecast on the news at 5 as we're looking live outside in Richland, 73 degrees. After this woman died in lockup, should local jails do more to protect inmates tonight? Hit by a big truck in bad weather? There's a law that says truck drivers have a legal duty to use extreme caution when driving in hazardous conditions. Hit by a big truck? I'm attorney Mariana Morales. The big truck, heavy hit. Call 853-2222. Tonight, as gangs take over the capital of Haiti, the people try to escape, but where will they go? Plus, what the key Senate and House races may signal for the general election. More Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on television. I've been with U.S. Cellular for years now, and I think I'm their biggest fan. So they asked me to tell you about their special customer event, Us Days. Us Days means exclusive deals just for us customers, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. So I said, if I'm going to be on TV, do you think I can get hair and makeup? And I even got a manicure, too. Introducing Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for our customers. Get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. <laughs> Vegas action is closer than you think. The fun is waiting for you at Knob Hill Casino. Come in and pull up a chair at your choice of blackjack, pie gal, heads up hold'em, or high card flush, and play with the friendliest dealers in town. Join our Players Club to take your game to the next level and earn rewards for food, bowling, prizes, and cash. There's always a spot for you at Knob Hill Casino where the locals play. Stan, you're right. The only thing better than video games are virtual reality video games. Especially when you're in a player versus player battle arena. And you're right about Hollowgate being another fun thing you could do at Triple Play. Yes, I win another round. That makes Roy 9 Stan 3. Epic comeback incoming. Triple Play has fun attractions for everyone, including bowling, ropes course, and many more. All attached to a cozy hotel. If I wasn't too big to fit in there, I'd whoop them both. With DISH, get the same TV bill every month for two years. Hello? Oh, God, I think someone's coming. No price hikes, no surprises. <laughs> because surprising TV shows are great. Surprising TV bills, not great. Let's get you some fresh water. The two-year TV price guarantee from DISH. Tuned in to you. You were nominated for Volunteers Count, and you won it. You've got yourself a $1,000 donation from STCU. It's very rewarding. It makes it all worthwhile. She was just the perfect person. Please tell us a story of someone you believe is making an impact. Hit by a big truck in bad weather? There's a law that says truck drivers have a legal duty to use extreme caution when driving in hazardous conditions. Hit by a big truck? I'm attorney Mariana Morales. The big truck, heavy hit. Call 853-2222. Welcome back. All right, check this out. You can already check out books, movies, audiobooks from the library, but as of tomorrow, you will also be able to check out Dungeons and Dragons kits. Yes, and then starting in Yakima, this is where it's going to start. The Secretary of State will be at the West Valley Community Library tomorrow afternoon, delivering the first of 75 Dungeons and Dragons kits donated by Wizards of the Coast. Those kits will eventually be available at every local library system in the state. I have not, I have not played Dungeons and Dragons. You know how many of those little dice I have found around my house, thanks to my son and his buddies when they were growing up. <laughs> well, I still find them, actually. It's <laughs> a big deal. Well, it yeah, I think deal. a lot of people are going to get started on this. <laughs> Try it out, see if you like it. All right, let's take a look at our viewer photo of the day. This is a good one. Our friend Larry sent this in. Now, this was taken last year, but look at that sunset. Mm. That was out uh, near Boardman, out on the Columbia River, Patterson area. It is gorgeous. and. I just can't wait till the summer's here and I see those sunsets every mm -hmm. single night. Thanks for sharing. Grab that QR code or get your phone out and snap that. I'll show it again at the end of the six. 
snap that, that's how you're going to submit your photo. Now, if we can shift gears for a quick second, you'll have a chance to see the International Space Station. You have a three minute window. <laughs> it happens tomorrow night at 9.01 p.m. Max height at uh, 56 degrees. It's west, southwest, so look to the southwest sky and you might just see it scoot by in the sky tomorrow. But it'll be clear oh. enough to see that, you're saying? It might be. It might, might not be. <laughs> we'll have to see. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Stacey, and thank you so much for watching. World News Tonight with David Muir is next. We're back tonight at 6. Yeah, hoping your news is good news. Have a good night. <laughs>